Hi everyone, my name is Swanee. If you are new here, please subscribe if you like PR videos, keto videos, um, lifestyle videos. I make all of them. I recently wrote a book, so I thought that today I would talk about everything that goes behind like actually promoting your book which does take a lot of time. So I am now remembering this quote that I read in a blog that said, you should take the same time marketing your book as you did writing your book. And I'm like, hmm, that's gonna take a bit. First things first, I apologize for not uploading last week. Um, I was like launching the book and then I was also getting ready for a vacation at the same time. So there was a lot going on, but we are back now and better than ever. So specifically today, I'll talk to you about social media and public relations, just because I have been focusing on that for the past ever and also heavily for the past week. So as you guys know, I've been talking about TikTok since like a year and a half ago and how it's such an amazing platform to grow your audience because it's focused on the creator so if you like create a video and people like it like it shows it to more people so just like the algorithm i don't really know how it works to be honest like not a lot of people actually know how it works but the way that it works is like if you do um you are able to grow your audience faster so i've been focusing mostly on making tiktok videos and then because instagram is now more centered on video content so that means that if you make reels it'll show more people your reels versus if you just post photos it's not going to show as many people your photos instagram actually changes algorithm to be like more video content friendly or to be like a video content platform i'll put some articles up here so you guys can read about them yeah so i tried just repurpose the content that i use um on tiktok and use that on instagram reels so it's not like double the work for me so like i'm not creating two different things but I will only use that content where it makes sense on my Instagram, right? Because like not everything that you post on TikTok because it's such a different vibe, I think. But like some things that you would post on TikTok, like I would never post on Instagram because they're kind of cringe. But like TikTok gets it, like because it's a trend or because, you know, whatever is going on. So I've been posting on TikTok and then repurposing my content on Reels. So on TikTok, what I try to do is like use all the music for the trends that are happening, even if I am not like... Even if I'm speaking, I will always add music to my video. So the reason that I always use music on my videos, even when the music is on mute, is because that bumps up your chance, your chances of more people seeing it. Um, so like if a sound is trending, and even if you don't do like that exact trend, but you still use that sound, um, you have like more opportunity for visibility in your video versus like if you don't add any music to your videos, which is like you don't have to add music but if you do then that is going to be better for you on tiktok the second thing i do on tiktok is that i try to follow as many trends as possible but the most recent trend that i followed was the sound that was like asking you um like people would post it as like whenever people see me they ask this and then it would say let me see the baby and so i try to like repurpose that content to fit um like my book and my book promotion i would like to see the baby I suggest that if you have anything to promote or even if you're just trying to become an influencer forget all the other apps and get on TikTok because it just moves so much quicker than everything else I do a lot of like content about the book um, and so I obviously like want to do that because I want to promote the book but I also want to do content about just like myself and like funny videos that people like because people don't always want to hear about the book like some people already bought it or some people you know are not interested at all or like don't follow me for that so I don't want to like completely like bombard people with um, like book content all the time because they obviously come to me for different things YouTube or to you guys I give you all of like the the background details of what's happening so um, you guys get to see like my thoughts process behind what I'm posting on Instagram what I'm posting on LinkedIn when I'm posting on TikTok like all of the content that I'm creating you guys get to see like what why I'm why I'm doing that or like why I'm thinking about that um, because that makes sense for YouTube right because that's what you guys follow me for so I try to like modify for the different audiences as much as I can but it's only like one me so <laughs> please bear with me because it's just like a lot of things for one person to do but that's fine we can do all things so the same concept goes for instagram in addition to reels that i'm posting on instagram I'm trying to post more photos about me or about the book or more like graphics or more like tweets that i tweet i'm not really big on twitter but now i i am trying to be um because it's just like really easy to kind of write a thought and then share it with people so i feel like before i used to be like oh like let's design it let's put it on canva and now i'm just like okay let me just write it and like put it onto Instagram, you know, not complicate my life by like adding an extra step. I'm not a huge fan of IG lives in terms of like watching them. Sometimes I'll tune in or like 
something that I'll do is when they finish the IG live, I'll just kind of like move the, like scroll around to see like what parts I'm interested in. But I found that IG lives have actually been really beneficial in promoting the books, especially with um, the women who have so graciously been like so willing to do IG lives with me, which is amazing um, because they have their own audiences and they have their own people who have not yet learned about the book. So it's not necessarily for like my audience like obviously my audience can tune in and it's going to be hosted on there they're usually hosted on my channel but um it's also for their audience to tune in and learn about the book so that's another like form of promotion um that has just like it's really fun because it's just kind of like a conversation with that i've i've already had conversations with them so this would be like an extension of the conversation and it gives me an opportunity to also like show people the book and read a part of their profiles which is really cool so it's a really nice thing to do it's not just like you know about promotion and like selling the book but it's also about getting to know this person their background and the amazing things that they're doing regardless of whether or not you like want to purchase the book you know but um hopefully you do but that's that's like the point of the ig live but it's also about showing like connecting with people overall that's how i'm using social media to promote the book and just kind of like before when i was using social media I didn't have anything to like I guess I just didn't have a direction because I didn't I didn't have like a goal with social media well my goal is like to grow and to like obviously talk about my writing and stuff like that but I didn't have like a specific thing that I wanted to do right and now I have like this very specific goal that I want to reach and I have I can plan my content around it right so it's not like I said it's not just about the book it's also about like what I'm doing because I feel like people like to connect to the person behind you know the person that's like writing the person that's creating everything so i feel like people like at least i like that so i like to do whatever i like to see because for me promoting myself i just i just kind of like get bored and get over like promoting the things that i'm doing so if it's if it's something that other people have done like there's so much content within the book to kind of pull from because these women have really done amazing things right so i can create a tiktok about like three amazing latinas that you didn't know about that i'm probably you know that i'm introducing you to three badass latinas you probably didn't know about part two Mirtha Michelle is a stunning Dominican actress and poet. She wrote all of these books about love, self-love, and relationships. Carla Deras is the designer of the line by K. So many celebrities have worn her pieces, including Kim K. I mean, just look at this dress. Melinda Solares has the job all women want. She's a beauty director at Sephora, gets to try on makeup every day. All their stories are in this book. So this is like knowledge that I'm giving people. And then like that, I can promote the book. So because of like, you know, there's so much content to pull from it. I feel like I have so many ideas now, which is amazing. And I'm so grateful for that. In terms of public relations, you guys know I've been pitching the book for like, um, I'd say about a month and a half before the pre-sales came in. One thing is, I wish I would have started a lot earlier. And then the second thing is that I couldn't have started earlier because I started as soon as I got the final PDF. Um, of the book to be able to like send it out to the editor so that they could see the actual book even though I didn't have it in print. We started as soon as I could pitching it out to press and um, that was like my active pitching like fall book ideas, um, Latinx Heritage Month uh, authors, Latinx Heritage Month books. Um, because it, Latinx Heritage Month started in September, I really wanted to do the pre-sales in September because I thought it it all just all made sense with the timing. So timing is also something very important to keep in mind when you're promoting in PR and when you're marketing whatever it is that you're you're doing. So for this, I thought it was very um, it just made a lot of sense to do it during this month. Right now, because I've already launched it and because pre-sales are already live, what I'm doing is more of like um, like passive pitching. I don't know if that's a term, but that's what I call it. And I'm gonna insert a clip that will let you know what that is. All right, you guys, so what I have been doing to pitch, aside from like the pitches that I've already sent out, which have been many and plenty, is that right now, um, today is the start of Hispanic Latinx Heritage or Hispanic Heritage Month. If you like just look at who is covering that, or like for example, this person at CNN just covered why Hispanic Heritage Month starts in the middle of September. So right now, like it would be a great opportunity for me to say, hey, I love your article, I learned this, it's so great. I have this book in case you wanna consider it for coverage. So that's just kind of like how you can target people like as you go, like um, it'll take me like five minutes to send that pitch because I already have it like written out. Um, but it's just something that I do like just consistently if I see something that I think 
um, a journalist discovering that would that it would make sense for me to pitch them my book. So that's what I've been doing. But I've also been like actively pitching. And I've also been seeing everywhere that people, that journalists are now looking for gift guides. So um, that would mean that I would pitch them my book as like a gift guide idea. So the PR side of things takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of like energy to think of it and then to like pull lists and to connect with journalists individually to send it out. Like it's a whole job. Like people have whole jobs for this. I know because I worked in PR. Um, so it, it's taking up a lot of my time, but I think it's also something that's really worth it. Um, in terms of like TV stations, like for the stations that I pitched in Miami, um, I've talked to them about like highlighting all of the talent that's in Miami when I go to their, you know, to their TV station. If it's something national, then I could come up with a creative idea to talk about like, you know, everybody in the book or to kind of do something creative for the book. But if it's like Miami based, I'm like, okay, like maybe we can highlight everybody that um like all this great talent that came from south florida because they are miami based you get what i mean so it's not just like about it's not just me coming to the producer and being like can you promote the book but it's like can you uh, hear some ideas as to like what we can do to like promote this book but also like make it you know fun and, and cool content for you guys as a tv station that's what i'm doing in terms of pitching tv if you want ideas for how to pitch or more I have a tons of videos on um, how to you know my day in a life working in PR how to pitch how to not pitch uh, so I'll leave the play the PR playlist down below so you guys can check it out but essentially that's like the gist of it there's a ton that goes into marketing a book that's a tea that's what's going on it's a whole lot of work I do want to do a YouTube video where I kind of like walk you through everything throughout the week it's just really difficult to do that because um, if I'm I, if I'm focused on one thing, I just want to focus on that thing and make sure that that thing is like 100%, right? So it's like if I'm filming, it's kind of different. And then also like sometimes I'm just not ready. Like my face like looks horrible or I just I'm in my pajamas or I just didn't put makeup on. So like I don't want really want to film, but I'm going to try really, really hard next week to do like a week so I can walk you through every day of, you know, what it's like and what I've been doing so you guys can see. So I want to say thank you for anybody who purchased the book, for anybody who has shared any content or supported me, has said nice things to me, has just like emailed me or reached out about anything. I really appreciate that. Like literally that's what keeps me going. So thank you for your kind words and your good energy. And I hope that you got something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it. Um, and I will see you back here next time.